Hi, Isaac. Great to see you, and I'm thankful for you and uh, your amazing growth as a Christian. Just thank you for that. Uh, but I think there is some confusion in all this. Um, and I don't know how to say this. I don't, I don't know how to start, really. But I think a, a, uh, a principle of Bible translation is uh, that in the Greek language, you have, in, or, in order to make a translation, you have to have a knowledge of well, the Bible, the Greek language, and you have to have a knowledge of the English language. And, and the better you have of each language, the better of a translation you'll make. Uh, and a Greek word uh, can have multiple definitions in a, in a lexicon. But when you get down to a particular uh, context where that Greek word is used, uh, you have to make a choice of how you're going to translate that word. Which one of these? It might, a Greek word might have several different uh, meanings that would equate into English, but in a particular uh, context, you're going to have to choose one. Uh, in, in the, as you started off, you talked about business, domestic, social, and Christian fellowship, and you had some verses listed on the board, Luke 5, 1 Corinthians 7, 1 Corinthians 5. In those verses, the word fellowship in English is not even found. Now in Luke 5, and, and I not quite sure about the other two, but in Luke 5, I know that the word koinonia is there, mm -hmm. but it's not in the New King James, the NIV, the NASV, the ESV, and I'm sure if you went down a list, you might find some place in some version, but the versions that I would look to, it's not translated fellowship, and that's, when you, when you build up a, in all of these versions, it's not translated like this. Mm -hmm. It's because the translators saw that that translation of fellowship, just say in Luke 5, didn't carry the meaning of that context. In the English language, the word fellowship has uh, some meaning and it has some, uh, it implies certain things. Mm -hmm. And I think you did that very well because you talked mostly about Christian fellowship. And... Uh, and that was great, you know. But these other things, I think we, we downgrade the word fellowship when we start talking about business, domestic, social. The New Testament doesn't use that word fellowship in relation to those things. The word koinonia is back there, mm -hmm. but the translators of our New Testaments didn't translate. I mean, you're going to find a translator. You're going to find something. You say, never. You're going to find somebody yeah. who may have done that. But, like I said, NIV, New American Standard, ESV, New King James, they didn't translate it like that because they didn't think that that word fellowship carried the implications and meanings. And the connotations. In, yeah, in that context. And, and, uh, and I think we downgrade the word fellowship when we talk about, and everybody does this, and I keep my mouth shut most of the time. I'm just not keeping my mouth shut right here. Uh, when we say, we went out after church and played volleyball and we had fellowship. And I say, no, we had fellowship when we were singing together and we were praying together and we were studying the Bible together. I don't think that fellowship only happens in, in the assemblies of the church, mm -hmm. but I do think it happens in the context of spiritual activities. Right. Uh, and I think... The evident, there are several evidences of this confusion, but the evidence of the confusion came at the very end of your talk. You said, where fellowship is strong, church discipline is strong. And I went, well, I wonder what it means by fellowship. But I think you answered that because I think you meant hanging out. Uh, that was your word, your other modern way to say fellowship. I think you meant where, where Christians hang out together, and I kind of think you meant you can tell me. What did you mean? Where, you meant where, where they, they go out to coffee together. They play volleyball together. They uh, go to each other's birthday parties. They, they get involved in their children's lives. And all those things are wonderful things. Uh, but I don't think the New Testament calls them fellowship. Right. Anyway, I just wanted to say that. No, I was, yeah, I totally get what you're saying. And personally, 
for whatever it's worth. I don't use fellowship in a social or trivial sense either in my own life. Um, yeah, I've heard people bring up, oh, we played volleyball and we're going to go fellowship and whatnot. If we take the loosest meaning, if it's just sharing in something or partaking together, yeah, in a sense, yeah, but I see what you're saying. It's restricted to spiritual things, and uh, yeah, I'm open to that. Brother Ethan? I appreciate your talk, and um, there, like, a, there's a few things I would say a little different. I'll get to that in a minute in my question, but um, there were a lot of verses and things that I think it's good for me to keep in mind in my situation. Those who know me well know that I'm not exactly as black and white or wouldn't have said everything exactly the way you do. And um, so that's kind of what my question, I, I, I have trouble with a one size fits all on this. But what I do want to say is my position on this, or if you, whatever you want to call it, my take on this, has been relatively unchanged for the last 10 years. In that time, I have watched brothers who were significantly more strict than me just fly past me and take a much looser approach. So what I want to say to people like that is just because you may not agree with it completely, and this, for some people, I know this isn't worth anything. I know by experience. But just because a brother doesn't feel like he can say everything the way you said, don't throw everything out. Because there are some things here that are Bible. Like you went through a lot of verses and those verses do mean things. And so just because I have some problems seeing some consistency and application of this, and there are others that I know, because um, I get plenty of the comments from people who have that kind of feeling, just because I have trouble with the consistency, just don't throw the whole thing out. Don't just go to the opposite extreme. Right. Because they're just... Just And so I, I just want to be clear on that just for everybody to clarify where my question is coming from, but also for those who are looking at this and they're like, it sounds good, but I don't see us practicing that consistently. Sometimes people's reaction to hypocrisy or inconsistency is to throw the whole thing out, and that's not usually a good idea. Right. That being said, um, kind of my question, and I, I'm not trying to put you on the spot. I know um, yeah, you seem very relaxed, but I know this can be intimidating and I'm not wanting to make this difficult for you, but just comment on any of this that you feel like commenting on. And some of this is going to be things that we just each will have to look through our lives and applying these ideas and looking where the application is working or isn't working and analyze what, what's going wrong. And I think what sometimes is going wrong with some of us that have some trouble saying some of the things the way you did is... Just in a group of people as big as we are and as diverse as we are in other areas, naturally we're going to come to some different conclusions about what some passages mean. Some people are going to be more strict about those conclusions. Others are not. I've been on both sides of that. When I'm the more loose one, it's easy for me to tell the person, you're just wrong. You're just too strict. And that solves the fellowship question. If I'm the more strict one, then that raises some problems for me in applying this. And sometimes these are relatively trivial things. That's fairly easy to just sweep under the rug. Sometimes they're not. Sometimes it regards some major lifestyle questions like that sometimes get into some morality questions. Sometimes it is deep doctrinal questions regarding the resurrection or the atonement or foundational doctrinal things. And it can't even get into worship. And this is where this has come up even more so for me in the last few years is how do we apply this to different responses we have taken on COVID? Because that applies, it brings it to worship, which is where we often draw these lines. I don't want to make different choices related our, to our response to COVID being fellowship issues. I don't see those as fellowship issues, and I don't want them to be. But I can't take everything you said. I can take a lot of what you said, but I can't take everything. And based on the way I see the Bible on some of those things and make that mesh. I have friends that view things the way I do. And they're saying, this means we have to apply this to the COVID things. I can't answer them based on this. I have to add some other passages that I think come into this question. I have to look at some of those passages in some ways that you didn't look at this morning or this afternoon. Or else I feel like I can't consistently do this, but get to the response that I think most all of us agree of not making some of those fellowship issues. But it's not just the COVID, it goes back to things prior to that. And I think some of the problem that we're having with looser fellowship is people looking and not feeling like 
our application is consistent with our teaching on this. And, um, but that, the biggest question that, or biggest concern I have on all of this, inconsistency is a concern, and I, but I'm, I give people some pass on inconsistency because most everybody is inconsistent to some degree. And I don't like the idea of just throwing everything out because we see inconsistency. It's not a good approach. But sometimes this becomes a hindrance to having real biblical discussions about everything. I, I can't tell you how many times we've been in a biblical discussion on a topic with a person and are you going to make this a fellowship issue? And it's like we can't really talk about the topic until I answer, am I going to make it a fellowship issue? The implication is, if you're going to make it a fellowship issue, then I'm going to hold you at arm link anyway, because if we don't agree on this, then we're going to part ways anyway. If you don't make it a fellowship issue, I don't really have to worry about what you say because it's not that important anyway. And so kind of, I think, I, and I'm, I'm not saying I have answers on this. I don't. I think people smarter than me are going to have to answer these, but I think these are questions that we, it deserves a little looking and looking at some other passages on different, a little less one size fits all, but it doesn't mean throw everything out. But I'll just, I'll leave it at that and you can comment on whatever you want. And I'm definitely not trying to no, yeah, make yeah. your life hard on this. The way I think about all that is a lot of these situations require maturity and wisdom. And uh, we have to look at each situation case by case. Would you like any summary statements? No, I just want to say thank you for the invitation. I'm not an expert on this by any means. I don't know everything. There are even situations like our brother pointed out, I don't have the answer to. And I defer to older and wiser brethren on. Um, I will say this since I have the floor. I just want to say thank you to the brethren here who record this. And in the last five years I've been a Christian, I've learned more at whatever kind of rate, however fast that is, because of this platform and this forum from all of you guys. And this is my first time coming. So as your little brother, I just want to say thank you guys for all that you do and for this.